All right, everything looks a little bit better now. So let's see what my opponent's drawing. They're drawing a land. So we actually don't have to play into this spell here. Because... They have to go, like, block, block. They have to block at least two creatures. Okay, now I don't know what was going on there. It just like completely tweaked out. So you have to block two at least, and then we know we're not dead to whatever they have coming off the top. So they put like they make each of their dudes four power. Even if they pump, there's still one damage off. Oh. That was a good one. Looks like we're good now. I appreciate everybody that stood with the stream here. Uh, Motley Slayer. We have three follows today, so I appreciate you all following. I try to, like, make it so... I try to, like, I, I wish I had something to I wish I had made it so I gotta work on the video so I'm gonna just grudge two things here at the end of their turn which should coax out the spells the spell peers and then we should just be able to battle rage over the top whatever they're doing Spell Pierce the back half. And then we battle rage for the win. And even if they don't spell pierce the back half, they have to get rid of both of their creatures. Okay. And now we just serve. Yeah, I think whatever you do with your Death Shadow decks, you need to make sure that you can handle the Humans decks. I think that the Humans decks are really bad matchups for Shadow. And if you don't have an answer there, that deck's going to beat you. I think even if you devote it to it, I think you're still like a significant dog. Okay, so four. We just Battle Rage over top of this. Because if we first strike, they don't gain any life. It didn't matter which one we Battle Raged, I guess. We had it rolled up. I'm going to figure out how to restart my YouTube videos or, like, combine them. And we're just going to keep it the same way on the draw. I don't want to board out too much, dis like, discard spell because the discard spell on one is very good. I don't like collective brutality in this matchup. Because we've already got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We have 10 ways to deal with Steel Overseer on the draw. I'm not counting our discard. Oh, man. I was almost up to 50 viewers. And now I'm down to 25. The sadness. If everyone likes what you're seeing. I wish I hope you all hit the follow button. Um, if you guys want to see more, you should check out my YouTube page. It's the best way to support me. Uh, we're gonna keep this. We have a redraw. We have a potential uh, death shadow, early death shadow, and we've got lingering souls, which should be pretty aces. And terminates always terminates kind of a good little safety cover, so we don't get wrecked by um, whatever the dumb card is, steel overseer. They mulligan as well. They put a card on top. Got a one drop coming, sir. Pretty explosive. Okay, I'd rather it be this than the other one. So really good draw here would be like an Abrupt Decay, an Ancient Grudge. I'm gonna cycle this now. Yeah, that's, a, that's pretty good. <clears throat> Can't really ask for much more. 
the master. So we can deal with that. My opponent's shown us spell pierce, so I think I'm going to do it on my turn. And I think this is coming into play tapped. I don't think that we need to go really... I think this game's going to go long. Lingering Soul is going to play a really critical part. And we're, gonna, we're just going to hit this main phase. That's a really good draw. Blood St. Meyer can get us basic swamp if we need it to. Signal pest is fine. If they don't have another follow-up here, we're just gonna go, we're probably just gonna go Liliana, smoke the signal pest. It appears they have a follow-up though. And if they do have a good follow-up, we're just gonna shock ourselves and then hold up terminate plus whatever comes back. Now, Lingering Souls just kind of shuts this board down. So I actually think I'm just going to fetch a Swamp and then cast Lingering Souls. Then they can only attack with this. And then next turn we can go like Lingering Souls plus, or we can go like, um, they can't move Cranial Plating at instant speed, which is like what beats Lingering Souls. Next turn we can go like, we've got a very good turn where we can do something like Liliana Death Shadow, Death Shadow, Terminate Grudge, Terminate Grudge, Push, like the flashback, like the world is our oyster. Yeah, no opponent puts the brakes on. So we're gonna check out what they're doing here because they can have a spell pierce. Then we're probably just gonna jam this Liliana and just start going to work. It's gonna hit my face probably. My opponent just gal blasts me. Okay, we're gonna let that go. We're gonna smoke this signal pest. Again, we're worried about cranial plating, but this, like, we can deal with cranial plating because they can't have cranial plating and move it at instant speed. And if they can't move the cranial plating at instant speed, it's not being like souls. A master would be pretty, pretty annoying. There's can see, okay. All right. And that's why it's just so nice, like, there's there's not really a more polarizing card than Lingering, than Lingering Souls in Modern, in my opinion. Like, there are so many matchups where it just completely 100% dominates the game, or it's absolutely fucking useless. And that's, that's why you want to play this white version, because... This white version plays a card that is just like, this is, when it comes to card economy matchups, this is the best card in the form. Now, it's slightly underpowered when it comes to the white, the blue-white decks, or like the Field of Ruin decks, because they can just deal with your white source. But against anything like Jund, Abzan, Grixis Death Shadow, um, Affinity, you know, any of those, even blue, white, red, they have Electrolyze, which makes it a little worse, but even blue, white, red, just something that's not attacking your mana base, this is just the best card in the format in all those matchups. And that's what this card's gonna let us do. If this card's actually good, then I can play these, which is what I'm excited about. Might as well do my name is Dylan Hovey. I'm a part of the Card Hoarder Network. I appreciate y'all for showing up and hanging out today. Please hit the like button. It's just the best way. I want to get to 1,000 so then I can start talk, talking to other bot chains as well. Um, Card Hoarder is the best bot chain in the business. It has a great team. Has uh, The podcast is great. And um, they just have good prices to buy and sell at. Gamer Craze is a store that I played, learned to play Magic at. They're a really good store in upstate New York, so if you are up there, you should check them out. You can also check out their Crystal Commerce, which is linked below. They foster a college environment, so they buy and sell at a really good rate for the buyers. Um, all of my streams are logged on YouTube, so please go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to that. That's the best way to support me. I get the magic's expensive, and I get that like maybe like Twitch subscriptions aren't necessarily in your in your uh, in your budget. But the YouTube subscription is free. 
And that's the best thing to do. And um, you should also check me out on Twitter. Um, that's where I like to talk magic. I always, I usually stream every Wednesday and Sunday, but sometimes I have impromptu streams. Like I streamed yesterday morning. Um, sometimes like, cause I work consulting, I just have random days off. I usually stream on those days. So you should check me out on Twitter to always know when I'm about to go live. Yes, Dampening Sphere replaces blue and replaces the blue out of these decks. And um, it is also gives you a legitimately good plan against Tron. I don't think any of these Death Shadow decks are very good against Tron. I don't care if you're playing Ceremonies Rejection. Tron, it, Tron's a very good deck. Like, I want to say something outrageous. Like, like I think that I think that Tron might be the best deck in the format. You know, and I think there's a lot of people that just sit here and are like, I have a good Tron matchup. And you just really don't. Like, Tron is has incredible payoffs. Alright, so... We should be in good shape this game. I'm just going to take this Mana Leak so that if we draw something impactful, we can shove it through. I'm going to fetch a basic. We're going to mind our life total. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, see, that's like... If we find a land next turn, we just jam this Liliana and it takes the game over. Um... I do think that, like, a lot of the format thinks they're good against Tron, and they're not. And I think that anybody, uh, most people that tell you they are good are being dishonest about the matchup. And the frustrating thing about Tron is that there's no good sideboard cards for Tron in the format. Like, you can sit here and say that... It's an interesting draw. I'm going to attack first. And then I'm probably going to Thought Seize my opponent after combat. Yeah, between Ancient Star and Sylvan Scrying and the eight stars, the deck does what it does, and it's very difficult to disrupt it. Dampening Sphere is, like, something that attacks the redundancy. I could have just jammed Grimflare, but... I think we're going to take... If I take this Lightning Bolt, they actually don't really have a very efficient turn in the future. Like, I don't want them to, like, take Lightning Helix, then they untap and go Bolt Helix my Tomagoy. So I'm going to take this Lightning Bolt just to make it so, like, that it's going to take a while for them to kill this Goyf. Yes, and Tron, Tron's payoffs are amazing. Karn is amazing in a lot of matchups. Ugin cleans up a lot of matchups. Like, Tron's arguably the best deck. And I think that what keeps Tron in check is it's absolutely miserable to play against. So I'm actually going to jam this Grim Flare because I should have done it before combat because I don't really want this burn coming in my head. Okay, so we're going to get Snap Bolted. Well, now I think I'm going to just Abrupt Decay this Snapcaster Mage. And I'm not going to let my opponent block either because, like, this is going to grow Tarmogoyf. And, um, like, they just bolt my face, so the Tarmogoyf doesn't really do very much here. Well, okay, so Stody Silence is a bomb, yes, but on the draw, they just go map, Tron land, Tron land, Karn on three, and Stony Silence does nothing. So we probably can't discard, because, like, they have six points of burn. Okay, so now we actually... I don't have Delirium which is a little unfortunate. But I think... So we know their cards. So the big question here is I would rather have them point... Now I'm going to get one of these out of their hand. Then we're going to leave the other one in play and then we're just going to jam this Liliana. The, the frustrating part about, like, I stopped playing, like, Jund and Abzan because it was so frustrating to just go, like, land... Um, it was so frustrating to sit there and have your nut sideboard card and have it do nothing on the draw. Stony Silence does nothing on the draw. Okay. Um, so we could Thought Seize them, but if they drew another burn spell, they can't cast it. So I actually do think I'm going to Thought Seize them. We could potentially go to five here, which is a little dangerous. So I don't... I actually... 
So what, the, what would they draw? If they drew, because if they draw a cryptic command or a counterspell, then we're pretty punished. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to Thought Seize, hopefully, because they can't even cast two burn spells. So if they drew two burn spells, then, like, we're in good shape. We're worried, we're really worried about a card like, okay, see, so then we're glad we did it. So let's take a look here at what my opponent's drawing. Serum Visions. And then Grim Flare's aces in a matchup like this. The thing like with the thing that's really cool about Damping Sphere is it forces your opponent to interact with them. Like they they have they can't just because sometimes what they do with their scries. Bottom bottom, okay. They just drew a land. Okay, so that's a death shadow. That probably seals the game. Cause like they could just go map on one, um, two pieces of Tron land, and then you do, your Sony Silence does nothing. At least if you play your sideboard card on turn two on the draw, they need to have a card for it. Like they need something, and that's what's important. Is you just you you force interaction. Oh, they draw it. They drew it. Oh, that's that's. They literally went perfect into perfect after going bottom bottom. Oh, that's frustrating. That is super frustrating. But what are you gonna do? So in this matchup, I want lingering souls. It's not great, but it's still okay. Um, Liliana Last Hopes actually, I don't think it's very good in this matchup because they exile all my creatures. While it's a win condition. It's still not super great, in my opinion. Um, I don't want the Battle Rages. I don't want the Terminate. And I don't want the Lightning Bolts. I kind of want Decays because they could bring in Detention Sphere or whatever the card is. And uh, get me a little bit. Like, Abrupt Decay hits. Spell Queller hits Detention Sphere, hits Rune Halo. So I don't really want a sideboard like this. I could see cutting like a Street Wraith, bringing in another Fatal Push, because being able to push Colonnade is really important. Um, I could cut another one of these to bring in a Liliana the Last Hope. I can buy that. The Last Hope is just a win condition. While it's very slow, it can it can like recoup a two for one. Like my opponent's got a two for one then to kill my creatures with burn, more than likely. And this is gonna punish that play with pattern. I don't think I want to sideboard anything else though. I think I'm just gonna keep this as is. And look to sideboard a little differently if depending on because they could be the control mat, the control version. But Okay, this hand's pretty good. In a hand like this, we can bobble ourselves, and if we don't want the top card, we can traverse for a land. I don't really want to, like, super go ham on my life total. So we want that. Cycle these. And then this land is coming into play tapped. Definitely getting a godless shrine, more than likely. And then we're going to bring... We're definitely going to sideboard in to like, we're gonna play Grim Flare, and even if it gets bolted, we're gonna hopefully draw a land and just jam this Liliana. I guess this was actually a mistake because they could, they could do different things if they see my, uh, um, they could play differently, seeing white. So I shouldn't, I shouldn't have taken the shortcut. So either way, if we draw land, we're in pretty good shape. And if they don't have... I'm assuming this thing's dead. This Grim Flare's got to be dead. Ah, holy shit. This Grim Flare going to live? Yeah, if this Grim Flare lives, it's going to be amazing. No, yeah, that was probably wishful thinking. All right, so we want a land. So, um, so we can actually traverse... 
for a basic. And now we have Delirium. So I'm going to traverse for a Tarmogoyf. I guess Grimflare is actually just better than Tarmogoyf in this position. Because Grimflare puts a lot of pressure on them. It's a creature that they have to answer because it snowballs out of control. And if my opponent holds up mana, I'm just going to play like Green Souls. If they tap out to do something, I'm going to play Grimflare. Wow, they're not going to field me? you got to field me, right? Draw step field. Yeah, okay. Whew! Vendillion click. Well. <laughs> LOL. What are you gonna do here? I have to be worried kind of about a Jace, I guess. And I can easily so I took the last hope. So I think what I want to do here is go discard spell into Tarmogoyf. Because I can go Brutality on this and Escalate and ditch both of these um, Lingering Souls next turn. And still be able to cast them back even if they piss away their whole turn Field of Ruining me. Field of Ruining. So I'm going to do this. Snapcaster, Snapcaster. <coughs> and now I'm going to jam this Grim Flare. Grimflare even gets through, like, they don't have any way to deal with it. And even if they go snap bolt after they block, it still gets in a trigger. Opponent gets in. Why not collect a root? I'd rather get my creature down. Here, like, he, what's he gonna do with this cryptic command? He's gonna tap my dude and draw a card. He's gonna spend four mana to cycle this cryptic. want lands because like our hands so glutted that we just want to draw lands and now we'll jam this lingering souls into this cryptic command <clears throat> they probably cryptic this and then we can flash it back next turn escalating our brutality a million times Now, next turn, we have a really good turn where we can go, like, flashback our Lingering Souls into Brutality um, with Kicked All Modes. Fire left now. So we're going to flash this back before we play. Oh, they're going to click me again. Oh, no. Okay. So. Okay. This gets our basic. So now we're gonna escalate this with three modes here, here, here. Take the cryptic. If they counter, if they have like mana leak here, then I'm gonna feel pretty bad. Pass that. We can't use passability. So I go to six to flashback lingering souls, or I can go to six to play Tarmogoyf. Then my opponent just snap past that. If they get one more land, they're gonna be able to go snap cryptic. 
So I think I've actually got to go Fetch Shock, Flashback, Lingering Souls. I go to six. Alternatively, if I go Fetch Shock, play Snapcat, or play Tarmogoyf, then it incentivizes my opponent to path this Tarmogoyf and not send this Lightning Bolt in my face. I think I would rather... I think we're going to play this Tarmogoyf because it puts the most pressure on my opponent. makes it so this they can't play this land tapped. If they play this land untapped to go Snap Cryptic, then... Um, then they have to go Snap Cryptic. They can't take a hit from this Tarmogoyf. If my opponent draws a burn spell here, I'm dead. But, such is life. Okay, so they're going to give themselves the option to not go Snap Cryptic. Attack. You go one. No, you're not. And we're totally fine with this because we're gonna play in flashback lingering souls. They're gonna bolt. Oh no! So they drew another lightning bolt. Looks like, or they're gonna knock the top of their deck. Looks like they're gonna knock the top. Yep. Yeah. Got it? Nope, they didn't get it. Okay, so. So we haven't seen any um I don't want this last hope my deck. Fuck this card. Cut one of these. Bring this in. Then we'll just bring in the Miser's Bolt, I think, to deal with Jace. We're going to be a little more conservative on our life total of the draw there. I think that's a mistake. Like, what I did there was I put myself in the position to, like... Like, I, I, both of these games, I put myself in the position where my opponent is, like, dead when I enact my game plan. And that's what you need to do when you play Death Shadow, I think. I think you need to determine, like, you can't sit here. Like, I'm not trying to play a long game with that collective brutality on the turn that I want. Like, I want a dude down. Because I want to start making it so, like, you have to answer what I'm doing. I don't give... I mean, I obviously care what my opponent's doing, but, like... The longer all these games go, the worse it gets for the Death Shadow deck. And you just need to, like, get in there, you know, put your head down and tell your opponent to, like, fuck themselves. Which is a key in modern. You need to have, you need to understand, like, how can I set my deck up where I can do that? This hand's pretty good. We'll keep this. Opponent Mulligans. You know what feels good? <coughs> when your opponent Mulligans, and they put a card on top, and then you hit them with a discard spell. Let me tell you about that. Okay, so now we actually get to bobble ourselves. And if we like our top card, we'll keep it. We don't like that one. So this gets Blood Crypt. No, this gets Godless Shrine, excuse me. Okay, so they're drawing a land. So we can deal with both of these flyers with our Lingering Souls. What I think I want to do is just get rid of this Electrolyze. If my opponent goes runner, runner, lands, I could be in trouble, for sure. But I think we're just going to take this Electrolyze, and then we're going to start beating down with our Tarmal Life. Because we want, like, we hope they don't go runner, runner, and that our Tarmal Life just takes us to the Promised Land.
I think my opponent should potentially helix me at the end of their turn. Because I think that's how they're winning. If they hit a land, we're in trouble. Okay, now we're now we're now the game's over. Because we're just gonna cast these lingering souls. So I'm gonna shock, play the souls. I don't understand why you brought this card in here. And this card probably should be boarded out. And while it's your best card against Lingering Souls, it's also your worst card against Lingering Souls. I did try Hazrin. I think I, I think that if I was going to play the white version, yeah, this is a good play by my opponent. My opponent understands that they can't win this game going long. So they're just gonna start getting in there. Um, I played Hazret when I was playing the blue version, and I did not like it. They went bottom, bottom, they found their land drop, which is good. That's a really good card for us that I don't think we want to do anything with at the moment. So what we could do here is just traverse for a land to set up just a more efficient turn next turn where we go like Lingering Soul, we go double or flashback brutality, something like that. So I think that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to go get a land. Get a forest. I think Hazard's a very powerful card. I think it's very underplayed in modern. And I would like to see if Hazard works out in this white deck. I think it's a better option than Ranger of Eos. Ranger of Eos is like a little slow. And it's only like absolute aces in the mirror. And now the world just our oyster. Like we could, my opponent's more than likely gonna click us. Okay, so now I'm gonna get in here and attack first. And then if they let this happen, they're dead. They don't like flash something in the block. They could flash in um, the click here to take the brutality, which would kind of suck, but we're not gonna get burnt out from 10 here without them dying. Snapcaster, okay. And then I'm going to just brutality them because I don't want, and I'm gonna flash back maybe one lingering souls because I don't want them to just go like, I don't know, something absurd like, um, I don't wanna get Wrath of God out of this game. I don't want to get uh, Engineer Explosive out. So let's go just Escalate with two modes. We're going to Gain and Drain, take a card from them. We know two of these. We'll ditch this land. We might want to Thought Seize afterwards. Should have ditched the Traverse. There's a, there's, a, there's a chance we want to cast a bunch of spells. Okay, so they're dead because they need land into... So we can, we're, we're just okay flashing back souls because they need land into uh, like wrath effect and if they go and they play um, I guess is it static caster specifically gives them another turn but that's the only card I think that wins them the game that prevents them from dying oh well, actually because they drew a card that could go land wrath so I fucked up I fucked up because they were drawing a card there that could go land wrath so that was a mistake on my part I should have thought seized them I'm gonna go grab some uh, socks. My feet are kind of cold. It does feel really good playing these lingering souls again. Like, I stopped playing this version of the deck because the white cards were just so. Um, well, the, like, the uninteractive decks are really good. Like, the uninteractive decks are a turn three, turn four decks. And, like, I didn't feel comfortable playing against them without um, counter magic. But, like, the uninteractive decks aren't as big any, or they aren't the best decks in the format. And I think that we have better answers to them with, like, you can answer them with Dampening Sphere and still play the game, but like these Lingering Souls just absolutely dominate when they're good. When Lingering Souls are good, they're the best card in the form. When they're bad, they're not. They're terrible. So like, that's why like I stopped playing Abzan because you can't main deck this card because this card only dominates like 30% of the format. But that 30% of the format, look the fuck out. I'm gonna grab some water, I'll be back.
And that right there is another reason why this Death Shadow deck is still great. That deck there is supposed to have a good Death Shadow matchup, and it just doesn't. Like, there are so many decks and there are so many people, it's similar to Tron. There are so many people that think they have good Death Shadow matchups, and they don't. Because, like, Thoughtseize plus Street Wraith plus Death Shadow is 12 cards that are powerful than most of the rest of the format. What makes things difficult for this deck is, okay, so looks like we're going to play a mid-range mirror here, is that it's dis it's difficult. Alright, we're going to take this Inquisition. We're going to draw another Inquisition. Then we're going to Thought Seize their Terminate. We're going to play against Mardu. This is the best fair deck in the format. If you want to play fair, Mardu is where you want to be. Um, because, like, what, Death Shadow loses percentages because the deck is very difficult to play. Okay, so this is going to, we're still probably going to get a basic because we don't want to get mooned. But this is a matchup, this is, this is another reason this deck here is why I've added Grim Flare. Because it just, it helps so much to combat this, like, this style of deck here, this lingering souls based, um, this lingering souls based control decks. Here we're going to traverse for a Grim Flare. We have another Grim Flare, so if this dies, we can go get another one. Mm-hmm. Ruined Standard. Buckaboo took my death shadow. Okay, so this, their last card, Lightning Bolt. So we're gonna get another Grim Flare. So I actually think I'm gonna Thought Seize my opponent. Because next turn I'm playing out, I'm playing the Scrim Flare, and I would like them not to draw another Lightning Bolt. We don't want this. I think we want to stack these like this, and then draw the land next turn. And this 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 reads like take five, but. I just don't want them to hit, you know, the third bolt. And then as long as we can keep this Grimflare going, we're going to win this game. It's just going to snowball out of control. Yeah, in my opinion, Grimflare is like, it's the third best option for this Death Shadow deck. And it's why Mardu became playable. Young Pyro. Top cards to terminate, which we want. Problem is, we're gonna have to take four damage, three damage to play it. Next turn. Whoa, I thought we had to terminate. Oh, we milled over it. That sucks. All right, well, we don't want any of these. I'm gonna play Grim Flare, play a tap land. Then my opponent's on blocking notice. Lingering Souls is a very good draw from our opponent.
But even Lingering Souls doesn't like beat us. Okay. So, against this deck, we want our own Last Hopes. We want these. Cards we don't want. We don't want Battle Rage. Um, Decays are decent. Fatal Push isn't very good. Also, Lightning Bolt's not very good. The card that I think is pretty underrated in this matchup actually is uh, Collective Brutality because it just gains you some life when you need it to. And it can, like, kill a young Pyromancer and discard something. Dude, welcome, welcome to Modern. Formats is fast AF. Liliana of the Veil is pretty, is, like, god-awful in a lot of at a lot of points. So I think I actually want to take this out on the draw and keep my pushes in. Liliana of the Veil is not too bad when you're on the play because it can hit a Pyromancer. And if you're both having a Lingering Souls off, then Liliana's very good. Yeah, we're going to go like this. Yeah, we're already 3-0. I just had to wake up. I had my head so far up my ass during the first league there that I just had to, like, had to snap two. All right, this hand is good, not great. And I really don't want a mulligan in these kind of matchups because it's just a strict card um, card resource matchup. So they're probably going to take my decay. Hey, Achopa, how you doing? Haven't seen you in a hot minute. It's probably because I haven't been playing Death Shadow. All right, that's not a bad draw because that lets us get a basic so that we can fight a Blood Moon. Surprised they took my shadow. Traverse. That's another shadow. I think we're just gonna play this and pass. Like there's their, their play pattern suggests they have another discard spell. And I would like to not turn my okay, so double traverse is pretty good. Take that. Another card that's like overrated in these in these traverse death shadow decks, in my opinion, is dismember. I think you do enough damage to yourself. Your deck's already linear enough. So we're just gonna go fetch a basic. We're not gonna get like we're not gonna get screwed by moon. Like a discard spell. I might just go fetch another basic with Traverse. Okay, so that's pretty good. So now I can actually go get a basic. We are going to get Mooned. And go Traverse for Good Flare. Get a Surgical Bro. No. A dismember is high is not necessary, I think, in these Death Shadow decks here. I think you need it in Grixis because you need to be like like if I play Grixis, I'm gonna play two. Exactly. Like you 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 just don't need it. Okay, so let's play this. I'm gonna shock myself and go get another one. The reason why this card's not very good against Grixis, which is kind of the only knock on it. It's very good here. My opponent's stuck on mana, which kind of blows for them. Okay, so they're going up top. So next turn, we're going to just play Shadow over Grimflare. Good four, okay. I think we just put max pressure on now. We will go here and here and then kind of like my opponent because like there's no there's not really any difference between nine and seven so we're gonna crack our opponent for 10 next turn and have terminate up why what's the reasoning behind no sweeper because you have three battle rages in the main deck all right we're not gonna go to six I think what we are going to do is we're going to attack. 
My opponent can almost Bedlam Revelry next turn. I don't want any of these cards. I might want Thoughts. No, we don't want to lose that much life. I did try Whispers Ever Cool, and I think it's too cute to Chopa. I do, I do think it's just a tad too cute. So they're drawing a Wear Tear. That's weird. I thank you for this follow, Melopsis. If you're still in the stream here, I appreciate that. Thoughtseize, okay, get my Terminate. We need a Lingering Souls. We draw Lingering Souls, we should be able to win this game. It should be all over. That's not good. Why did they bring in Wear Tear? They probably were worried about, um... Okay, so... We're just gonna mill all of these and then cast our souls. They probably were worried about um, Graph Digger's Cage. And a deck like this can actually be a little uh, liberal with their sideboard bring-ins because you have a card like Faithless Looting and Bedlam Reveler to just pitch them. So, like, you definitely can, you know, change. Like, here's, here's a Bedlam Reveler. All right. So, yeah, they ditched, like, Leyline of the Void. They might have been worried about Leyline of the Void from us. That's a pretty solid draw. So what does that do for us? That brings us back. That gets us a Grim Flare back. Okay, so I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attack with my flare. It actually doesn't do bring anything back because my opponent, um, they're a block. Holy shit, that's interesting. All right, we're gonna take this, and then we're just gonna guaranteed get our card out of this thing because this easily could die. And I just, like, want to get a card out of it. I think at this point, we just get a big Death Shadow. We've already got our card advantage. I didn't think they were going to block there. So that's why I didn't attack with the Spirits. This could be, like, K-Command. It's another Bedlam number, Okay. They ditch Lingering Souls. Yep, yeah, scoop them up. Opponent got stuck on lands there, which, you know, cost them the game. But it would have been interesting to see what would have happened had the game come out to, like, its natural conclusion there. Because, like, Grim Flare is just really, really good against their deck. And that's why Grim Flare's there. All right, we're going, we're playing for the big 5 -0. Can we get some, can we get some hype in the chat here? Can we get, like, if you have, if you have some, if you have emotes from other streams, you should spam them. We should get excited here. I've got some emotes from other streams here that I'm gonna put in. Cause we are gonna 5 0 here. Get that 5-0, baby. We've been paired. It's 5-0 time, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Um, I would like to play first. I feel like we can just do so much more. better with this hand. Like, we don't have any removal. We have double Liliana. We can traverse for a land and play Karmagoyf, which is kind of weak. I just feel like we can do better with this. This hand's not much better, but, like, at least we have a removal spell. I'm gonna put that on the bottom. Yes, I think Jund's I, I think Jund's a bad deck. Because Jund Jund cannot sit there and it cannot tell its opponent to fuck itself. Fuck it. Like if your if your modern deck does not produce you free wins, your deck's not good. Looks like we're playing against blue white, which means we're not gonna 5-0. Oh. 
Because, like, I mean, really, like, you're playing, like, Blood Red Elf's cool and all, but, like, it costs four mana. It went top top. We're probably, like, super dead. I'm gonna go fetch this untapped. Like, the same thing. Like, I think, like, you know, I think my opponent's deck's bad. Um, I think basically I think every control deck that doesn't play Blood Moon is bad. Because, like, God, maybe they'll play, just please play. God, if they play a Spreading Seeds here, I'm going to throw out. Play a Search for Scanty. God damn it. Alright, how bad is it? Let me see. Alright, so we're gonna take this spreading seas and hope my opponent doesn't draw a land on time. You know what information that I would want to know is like I want to know, because, like, so Jeff Hoogland made this really awesome article a little while ago where they talked about, like, the best decks in modern. And the, when it came from, like, a winner's meta game, okay? And he had two decks, like, Jund and Blue White Red were on top of that. This is right after Jace got in Blood Red Golf got unbanned. I would like to know exactly how many of. God, they just drew the untapped land, like, son of a bitch. I would like to know how many of all of those decks people registered in day one. Because, like, playing Jund is fun. Like, I like playing Jund. I like playing Mario Pyromancer. I like playing blue. I like playing control decks. Oh, we're just, like, super fucked now. Like, I'm going to go sit here. I'm going to take this Supreme Verdict. And then play my Shadow. But, like, we are dead. Um... Like, in playing Mar like, my favorite deck to play in the whole format is Mario Pyromancer. I love playing Mario, Mario Pyromancer. That's super fun, really interactive, great gameplay. But, like, you have, like, this set of the format. These, like, six or eight decks that you just can't beat. And are just, like, completely atrocious matchups. They're probably going to take my Abrupt Decay. I mean, I guess if they take Abrupt Decay or Tarmogoyf, it doesn't really matter. Um... That's my feeling on it. Like, and I know, like, my feelings, my opinions are, like, my own, and they're different than most people. But, like, if your deck does not produce free wins or kill people or lock people out of games, then your, de your deck's just not good over a long term. All right, we're going all in here. Tilt. Is that... No, I have another green source. Okay. My opponent can't fire up colonnade yet. My opponent does have to block next turn. And they can't just like attack with click, flash, and snapcaster mage and hope that works. I love the four card line, but I found it not good enough either, like you're saying. Yeah, like like Oh, they're gonna be able to cryptic me. That was stupid. I knew I was talking, I got on my like rant here and like I'm gonna get cryptic that in this game. Um, and then this match is atrocious, but in my opinion, this deck's bad. Like, I don't think this deck's gonna win a tournament because you don't get you're you're trying to sit here and grind out all of your wins, and like, that's just not it's not what we're looking to do in modern. Yeah, see now we're just like super dead here. Cause if, unless we draw like yeah, that's why I just rock combo decks like Adnaz. You're naturally good against some. Yeah, I mean like, but your your Adnaz game deck checks. Checks the boxes, okay? You can win on... Can, you can turn three with that deck, right? I, I don't know if you can actually turn three with that deck. But, like, there's a certain amount of... The, you have free wins. I don't even know if I... Is it even worth, like... We just can't win. We can't beat this. We just, like, can't realistically beat this deck. Which is frustrating. And th that's that's another reason why Death Shadow is underrepresented in the format. Is because... You get matchups like this blue white deck, or you get Death Shadow has like can look really bad sometimes. Like if you're playing against Burn, um, if you're playing against Burn, you don't draw Battle Rage. 
you don't thread the needle that your deck just looks bad and if your deck looks bad a lot of people are deterred from playing it like there's literally nothing well, yes there's literally nothing more fun than going like faithless looting into lingering ditch lingering souls lingering souls play pyromancer like or blood right off cascade but those decks are just so slow I have double discard spell, but no threat. And a redraw, and a lot of lands. I think we're gonna roll. We don't have a game plan. All right, we're gonna hope there's land on top. That's, we have to put that on the bottom, because it's a, actually, no, yeah, we have to put that on the bottom, because it's a slow cantrip. We could have kept it on top if we were on the draw. Um, I don't think Lingering Souls is that good, Color Triangle, because they deal with the white source pretty easily. I would not, I'd rather just like not play a long game. Yeah, now we're done. I'd rather just not play a long game against this deck. Like Lingering Souls, I can effectively, like if I could cast Lingering Souls. Mardu, yeah, Mardu Pyromancer is like, wow, this hand, we might have a chance. We're gonna take this Seer of Visions. Mardu Pyromancer is like, yeah, Mardu Pyromancer is my favorite deck. If I was just like, pretty much, like maybe you, you, like there's an argument that this matchup is so bad that you have to cheese them out. But like, yeah, but I didn't, I didn't, like I sideboarded out, um, what was I gonna say? Uh, I already sideboarded out some, like I didn't bring in some cards that were medium. Like Lingering Souls is kind of medium. I think it, I think it just like pushes your deck into like a fundamental place that you don't want to be in. Hopefully they haven't drawn any spells. They haven't drawn any spells. Damn, Phil. Phil, do you want to come up here? Do you want to say hi to the chat? Do you want to say hi to the chat, buddy? Come on up here. Oh, come on up here and say hi to the chat. Say hi to the chat, buddy. Oh, you want to say hi to me? All subscriptions... Yes, I think Blue Moon's the only playable control deck. All right, like we're playing Magic, I guess. All, all subscription and donation money goes to making sure that Philly keeps fat. You hear that, bud? You're a little fatty, and we're gonna keep you fat. You're a little fatty, and we're gonna keep making sure you are fat. Philly is getting big. Yeah, he's probably. Control, no, Control needs, like, Brainstorm. Yeah. Because, like, because the problem is, is, like, the format's so wide open that you can sit down here and you can have a hand of, like, Bolt, Bolt, Helix, four lands, and that hand, Jesus Christ. And that hand's just, like, completely unplayable against half the format, and you have nothing to make. Like, you just, you just kept seven, but mulligan to four. getting so big buddy the chat loves you if you subscribe to this channel you get the best emo the philly the philly dog emo the philly magic player emo and all subscription money goes to making sure and donation money all that all the bits all stuff goes to making sure that philly stays fat because we just changed him on his new food and he's he's getting into be a little fatty damn it Fucking Nightbot. Um, I don't even really know why we're still playing this game. Yeah. Alright, we are no longer playing this game. I'm gonna put you down, buddy. Okay. So we're going to concede here. I don't think control decks can answer a lot of things, to tell you the truth, because you don't have any way... You don't have any way to fix your draws. Like, if control decks had Brainstorm, I'd believe in them. But, like, you can just draw, like... Or you can draw counter spells and then be looking at, like, the Zoo deck. 
You know what I mean? And then, like, you can't do anything. So, getting back to this deck. I think this card is very good. I think this enables, like, a nice non-white, non-blue Death Shadow deck. I don't think you want this against a blue deck. Let's open up some chests, some treasure chests, excuse me. Because Ichopa resubscribed. My main boy, Ichopa. At least you did, you, you did resubscribe, right? I don't know. Let's open up one of these. Nothing? Let's open up, let's open up one so we get something decent. Dude, we still haven't got anything. All right, well, one more. What is going on? That's so bad. All right, we're gonna open up. We're gonna open up one more. Probably just gonna like tilt off and open up all these. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, I think control decks can work in like in a in a, in a honed tournament. You can play a control deck. Yeah. What do we get? Leyline of the Void. Oh, Twelve Seconds, nice. At least we got something. So I'm actually gonna send you guys over to um I'm gonna send you guys over to Gamer Craze TV, which is where I learned to play magic. Um 